on this episode of Minnesota Millennial Farmer. It's not ideal, but it sure is a beautiful morning. Oh, jeez. I can't believe it, guys. We're gonna do our best to get that bag filled. <laughs> It's 6 a.m. It's 18 degrees outside. The top of the ground is frozen. We ended up getting six inches of snow. Everything is a mess. Everything is sloppy. Uh, thankfully, we got only about 400 acres of corn to go. We're hoping that with the frozen ground, these machines are gonna carry nicely over the top of the soil, not create a lot of compaction, and not be a struggle as far as all the mud goes. So one of the many examples of frozen tundra farming would be that right there. We got the ripper out going early this morning, figured it was going to carry over the frozen dirt real nice, and all the rear leveling discs have frozen into place. They're just dragging across the top of the ground and pulling all the trash with them. But where he made that round, that dirt is steaming. He kind of hammered a bunch of that frozen mud out of it. He's going to take it back to the shop and park it in the shop because we got the trucks and the combine out of there now. So he'll park that in there, let it sit for a few hours, maybe have to go hammer on it some more and try to get those uh, leveling discs to free up. Once they're free, I think that'll go. I think it'll be not too bad. But that's one of the examples of what we gotta deal with when things are like this. That we're gonna have to load the trucks on the road from now on. It's not gonna work with them in the field. Luckily, our township roads in these areas are wide enough that we'll get the trucks up on there. We'll be able to get the grain cart next to them and load those on the road. It's not ideal, but it sure is a beautiful morning. There you can see how bad that corn is knocked down. The combine is struggling to get some of that because that snow and wind took this corn down. So we're having problems with that. Uh, we're pretty sure it's just the one variety that we're mostly having issues with. Once we get into back into some of the other hybrids, I think we'll be okay. truck dumping in the pits that came out of the field. I'm going to finish filling this truck full of dry corn and we can uh, have a guy take it to the ethanol plant. Well I'm headed into the field now. Got a call from dad. Apparently okay, we got serious combine issues. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, he just said something about an axle snapping and it wrecked the chopper and he doesn't know how we're going to get a truck back there to try and get it loaded to get it to the dealership. So I don't know what's going on yet. I'll get back there. We'll see what the deal is. Oh, jeez. Well, we don't know exactly what happened here, but obviously something in here the bottom two bolts broke there the tie rods broke this thing's sitting down i'm hoping i'm hoping the chopper's okay back here but i'm thinking it's not that's definitely not a good deal there so it's sitting on the hitch here but i think it's more so sitting on the tire on the other side actually. Deer's gonna come out see if they can get it standing up anyway so that we can get it loaded onto a trailer. I don't know if, hopefully we can drive a truck through the field here. We'll see what we gotta do. Chopper almost looks okay. The knife's inside of there. When you look in the back, the knives don't look like they got hurt. Can't really climb underneath there with it sitting on that tire to hold the thing up. We're thinking this right here is the sensor that lets you know when the axle falls apart. It had to come up high enough at one point to push this cylinder up against where it bent that tin down. So John Deere's got a guy out to look at it, see if he can get that thing up get it bolted together so we can at least steer it and maybe drive it up to the front of the field. I guess we'll see what he says when he starts pulling things apart. But we're thinking
thinking is uh, once we get it up front here, if we can get the header off, we'll uh, switch our other machine over, put the header on the 9650. Harvest 17 rolls on. All right, here's our plan now. Because we know we need to fill one more grain bag in order to have enough room in our bins to fit uh, the final 400 acres. So we got the bagger there. We're gonna run the bag at a different angle because that bag we were starting to get into some muddy spots. So we're gonna put this one in a little different area and hope the field is more firm. But, uh, that combine can possibly be fixed uh, by tomorrow. The deer guys didn't know. We got two of them down there working on it right now. So I'm running down to see how those guys are doing. Dad's filling the grain cart up now so that when I get back, we can get that bagger started. Either way, we've got to fill that bag, so we're going to have a day of downtime anyway. So we're just going to keep busy, get that bag done while they're working on this, and hope, hope for good news, and hope that they can get that fixed. We sent the guy that was running the ripper down to the ethanol plant with a load of corn, and uh, that thawed out in the shed while he was down there. So we got him up and going again. He should be out here somewhere. So we got things going on. We're going to fill a bag of corn. We got the ripper running and uh, let's hope these guys from Deer can get this fixed. So I drove to Deer, picked them up this tie rod I'm guessing that right there is probably worth 30 bucks, maybe even 40. That's a joke. I've never been to prison, by the way, either. That was a joke also, guys. If you guys ever think I'm joking, I am. I got kind of a dry sense of humor. Well, I haven't talked to the guys working on the combine for about an hour now, but it looked like things were going good there. Dad had to take off and drive about an hour away to go get an actuator for the chopper on that. Once he gets back with that, they'll put that on there. All in all, it doesn't look like that thing is going to be too bad unless they've run into some more stuff that I don't know about yet. Uh, I got the bagger going. I got a couple loads in that. I'm loading another load now. Hopefully we can just keep things cruising because uh, it'd be nice to get that combine up and going and get quite a bit done today even though we had that major breakdown and all of this before lunch. I'm doing it again. Two tractors and no hands. believe it but it's 4 30 we got that combine up and going we haven't taken any corn with it yet but I can't believe it six hours seven hours two guys working on it and they got that thing rolling and I don't think it really took that much to be honest with you uh, tie rod bunch of spindle bolts um, there's some damage to the to the outside tin around the chopper uh, but the chopper itself seems like it's all fine uh, we, we broke a uh, broke a body panel, broke a body panel on it, but uh, the ladder and everything above it looks okay. The tire's fine. I can't believe it, but it's 4:30 and we're headed back out to try it again. It's a rural Minnesota traffic jam. She's got some scars on her, but we're gonna get some work done yet tonight. at night and it's already been a long day we uh, finished the 40 or 50 acres that we were hoping to get done today we were hoping to go do another 100 acres or more but um, that didn't work out because of the breakdown and we started filling that bag earlier so now I'm gonna get that filled tonight we're gonna do our best to get that bag filled 
so that we don't have to deal with that. And hopefully tomorrow we can start early in the morning when the ground is frozen and things will go good. And uh, maybe we can not break the bolts on the spindle of the combine and we can cover some serious acres tomorrow. Because we need a day like that where we cover some acres. For those of you curious about how we get the corn out of these bags, there's a separate machine that goes with this system called a grain bag unloader. Uh, it looks like it should be a pretty slick system. I've never used it, so I can't say for sure. I have heard some horror stories. I've also heard of guys saying that, I've heard a lot of guys actually say that they work really slick. Well, we think this is gonna be our last load. Uh, it's just about 11 o'clock now. We started at 6 this morning, so we're going to be glad to get this bag filled up. It's about midnight now. And I'm going to be back here early in the morning to do this all over again, hopefully without the major malfunction. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to you guys for 20,000 subscribers. That's awesome. It's unbelievable. Uh, I definitely didn't think that was going to happen when I started doing this. But uh, thank you guys for that. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram as well. Go ahead and comment with any questions, suggestions, whatever you want. I don't care. Good, bad. Go for it. I'll answer what I can. Thanks for watching, guys. That is one of the saddest things I've ever seen.